talk about that with some more in our post-game analysis. Yes, that was it. The top 32 match. It was over in, in a hurry, to be honest. Yeah. Not what we expected, I would Not say. Not at all. Um, also, we, we got some blame that the hype wasn't so real this time around. <laughs> um, yeah, can you blame us? Uh, the first game was was kind of interesting in a way because Jake started with, with his so-called side deck tech in the main deck with the Ghost Reaper and Winter Cherries, stripping his opponent's deck off its boss monster, but... yeah. Thomas was able to do the same thing. Yeah, you've got you've got to wonder how many times this happened out on the fields um, this time, you know, this weekend, yeah. where people were just taking away those dragon busters. Yeah, I mean, and with both players uh, not being able to use the best monster, that was yeah. crippling the ABC deck a little bit more. It's a little bit more depending um, on its boss monster. Yeah. Dante, on the other hand, is of course a one of a kind, but um, there are other monsters in this side deck or extra deck rather yeah. that can really. Yeah, well, the other hand. just put some work in. Uh, yeah. I think that's the thing. The, the ABC Dragon Buster is really the boss monster. Whereas with the Burning Abyss monsters, you can kind of... Dante is their boss monster, really. It really enables all of the plays. He's very strong, but still, Break Sword and uh, Levier all been able to still perform without Do dancing. other things, yeah, yeah, that are helpful. Yeah, and the, the ge second game was basically just... Le let's take a look at Jake Quincy's hand. Um, there was very little that he could do, and uh, Thomas again had... Ghost Ogre and Winter Cherries. Yeah. So even if Jake would have had something, it wouldn't have looked great for him. And that was basically all she wrote. Yeah, just without having that Dragon Buster, it's just so difficult to uh, to progress. All right. Um, let's. In that case, we can spend the time elsewhere, so to speak. And maybe we can take a look at our country breakdown because we didn't talk yeah. about that leading into the match. This is what it looked like at the start of day one, yesterday morning, 489 players from the UK, making this one of the larger tournaments on that little island. Um, after seven rounds of Swiss, we cut down the field, just 119 players from the UK remained. We said it earlier, this is not all that surprising because very often when you have so many players from one country, it's because they are playing on home soil, many locals are showing up and not all of them have been playing internationally. Yep. Whereas the guys that made the trip from Germany, from Italy, from France, they are always at these larger events, so it doesn't surprise you as much that they will have great conversion rates. And many of the players that showed up from these countries are ending up in day two in this case, or in the top 32. Lots and lots of uh, UK players still. Yeah, 14 is a pretty decent amount. In fact, 14 is the exact amount of ABC decks we had as well. Maybe all of the UK players went with ABC, but I don't <laughs> think that's the case. Well, Thomas Rose, <laughs> at the very <laughs> least. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Then we got Germany, Italy, Bulgaria. I think that's the most success that Bulgaria has had uh, in, uh, on the international scene, which is uh, very nice to see. Yeah. Uh, Netherlands and France. So not the most diverse um, country breakdown in the top 32, but... Um, Still, quite a couple of countries being represented. Yeah. Um, let's go back to our deck breakdowns because during the round, uh, this was a question that came up on the stream a um, couple of times more. Um, we're going to have those in the written coverage, of course. So basically everything that we're talking about this weekend, uh, stats-wise, is going to be on the written coverage at some point. So you can, of course, check it out there and then you have all the time to do take another look at those breakdowns and uh, come to your own conclusions. Yeah. In this particular case, one thing that we came up with was that Lights 1 was a good choice for the weekend. Yeah, definitely. Because few players, or not that many players played it, and um, they all secured their play, or many of them secured a place in the top 32. Yeah. All right. That is basically it from the breakdown side. Yeah. I think it's time to call in Thomas Rose. Yeah, let's hear it from the man himself. Who's uh, going to walk us through his deck choice why he's going with Phantom Knight, Burning Abyss, and how things have been going so far. Yep. So we're going to be right back after a short break. Now 
Hello guys, welcome back to YCS Liverpool 2016. I'm here with Thomas Rose. Congratulations. Thank You're you very in much. The top 16. Yeah. Yeah. First <laughs> yeah, time yeah. I've made it this far. <laughs> there was a question mark there. What? Yeah, 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 I am. <laughs> yeah, congratulations. So um, tell us why you decided to play Burning Abyss. Well, Burning Abyss, Phantom Knights, a bit of strange stuff going on here. And you played 50 cards as well. Tell us a little bit about your deck. Um, I had seen that ABC was obviously really, really powerful. Mm -hmm. uh, I expected it to be the most played deck at the event. Yeah. And consequently, I expected everyone to be side decking or in some cases main decking all of their hate cards for it. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't particularly feel like running the gauntlet of ABC. <laughs> if you want to play the best deck, you have to do it better than everyone else that is doing it. Yeah. So my alternative strategy was to try and beat the best deck rather than being it. Yeah. Uh, so I, I put together a 40-card BA Phantom Knight deck okay. and essentially just took the 10 strongest side deck cards against ABC <laughs> and added them to the main deck as well. Right, okay. So that's how you achieved 50 cards. So uh, you, yeah. So you actually made a 40-card deck and then just dumped a ton, <laughs> ton of cards on top that you, you figured were going to be pretty good. Yeah. The other option was I could have played pure Burning Abyss mm -hmm. with all of the tech cards and still made it 40. Mm -hmm. But, again, with what I was saying about uh, the amount of side deck against ABC, mm -hmm. I expected to see a lot of Winter Cherries. Yes. And Pure Burning Abyss struggles without Dante's. Yeah. Whereas, as you saw, I got yeah. Winter Cherried in game one there. Yeah, and you were still able to play through I just it, yeah. used the rest of my extra deck. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I, yeah. I, I don't even play three Dante's because half of the games that I play, I don't get to use any of them. Yeah. So, so I use the extra deck space to play other things that won't get hit. Yeah, I mean, I, I noticed that the moment that the moment that happened, I said to myself, this is actually going to go in Thomas's favor because the, the Dragon Busters are so core to that deck, but your deck doesn't really mind too much about Dante. Yeah, absolutely. I would happily play every single game. I get no Dante's. They get no ABC Dragon Buster. <laughs> no problem I, I at am, all. I am sure you would. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us, how many ABC decks have you actually played up until this point? This in the was my sixth ABC in the tournament, and I think I've lost one game one in six rounds as against in, them. As in, like, one duel? One duel in six rounds of ABC have I lost to them. because. Wow. I'm that that's all I wanted to see all day. Wow, that's pretty good. I mean, having said that, I'm not going to lose my next round to ABC inevitably, <laughs> but well, let's let's hope, let's hope not. So, tell us a little bit about mass change too. So, we we saw a burning abyss deck that was oh, playing. Oh, the one this tech earlier. that nobody actually saw there. Yeah, given, we didn't give the it. game away. Oh. <laughs> uh yeah, that's another card that is really devastating for ABC. Mhm. Mm um if they clear your chaos hunter then they can play again. Mm -hmm. If they clear your any of your any of your floodgates, yep. they they continue to play. Um, but if you are playing with uh, Dark Law on the field, mm -hmm. even if they clear the Dark Law, they don't have any pieces, so they can't then use yep. the Buster Dragons. Yeah, uh, it's it's just another thing on the long list of monsters that I want to summon that gives me an edge over ABC. Yeah, well, that's that's a really fair assessment. Yeah, uh -huh. so you just yeah you you really 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 thought about this and just thought, I just want to summon these monsters and that's going to stop ABC from playing the game. Yeah, and I I also decided that I wanted to have monsters to prevent ABC playing the game because Twin Twisters is everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Do you think we've got to that point in in kind of like the curve of ups and downs with backer removal now, where everyone's playing backer removal but no one's playing backer? Uh, no, I don't. I think that. Because um, ABC has to play a field spell, mm -hmm. uh, back row removal is definitely going to stay in the game. And if people are already playing the back row removal and it's getting lightning rodded onto the field spell, in some ways that gives you some protection for your trap cards. Yeah. And obviously, trap cards are there, are... there are some really strong trap cards out there right now. Yeah. Solemn Strike, Solemn Warning, Vanity's Emptiness. Amazing cards. They can single-handedly turn a game. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, they can just get destroyed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as we saw during that, um, I think it was the second game where you uh, twin twisted Jake's back rows, and it was just two really big trap cards, and you, you know, you kind of already had the game in the bag because you'd winter cherries, but it kind of made sure that it just paved the way for you to be able to do whatever you wanted. Yeah. Absolutely. If if you hit two cards with a twin twisters, you're very unlikely to lose that game. Yeah. Um, 
I tried to design my deck so that I will only ever get hit for one with a Twin Twister. Yeah. So I've, a lot of the time I've been setting one and my opponent has to use their Twin Twister because they can't risk playing into it. Yeah, and then you've kind of saved something for next turn. Yeah, you, you get a cheeky plus one on the advantage train. Mm -hmm. um, you might have another trap that you can set next turn. It's just, it's, it's a card that can really turn a game. Yeah, I guess if they, and then if you let them Twin Twister the second one at that point, you've probably already won because they've minus themselves so much. Yeah, it so. just costs so much in terms of cards. Yeah. Well, I don't think we've ever had a 50-card deck win a YCS before, so... Um, Long Dao played at least 50 on his Mermails in Lille. Oh, yeah, of course. The, yeah, the, that was the big... I remember the 50-card um, the Mermail deck, because you just played everything, didn't you? Yeah. You played literally all of the water monsters, and it allowed you to play um, three controls, three Undine. Was, it, was that right? Did they play that in that? Uh, yeah. What do I not want to play against? Yeah. Pretty much anything that isn't either ABC or the mirror match, because all of my techs that I am playing uh, for that particular matchup are also very strong for people playing Burning Abyss. Okay, so so you're saying you do want to play against? I want to play mirror matches and ABC. Okay. Um, mainly else. ABC, but mirror matches as like. As a side vein, I'm also sort of accidentally pretty covered for. Okay. So um, but what do you absolutely not want to play against? What would, like so if you sat down next round and you saw someone and they opened up, like what what would we absolutely don't want to see? Um, because we've got some pretty crazy decks in the tournament at the moment. I I've already played against uh, two uh, metal foe decks and a mermail deck, and I managed to beat both of them. But those matches, some of my tech cards are much weaker against, and it depends mostly about whether I can get to the Dark Lord. Okay, yeah. So I guess, uh, yeah, Dark Lord generally is just pretty good against yeah. everything. I, I don't think Dark Lord really has any bad matchups right now. Yeah, well, I mean, th there was an entire deck based around just summoning Dark Lord. Then it's been in multiple formats now, the, the Master Hero deck. So, yeah, the fact that you can sneak it into your deck is yeah. pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Right. Well, congratulations on your on your match. Thank you very much. Go and prepare for the for the for the next match. You know, get some water. Yep. Can't calm yourself down after the really exciting <laughs> feature match. And yeah, so we're going to be right back with the top 16 of YCS Liverpool 2016. We'll catch you.